Let's see, are we ready to go? Yeah, right there, guys, okay. Alrighty. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing in Full Media Part 41, Re-Enter. In today's episode, we use the theme of re-entering. So we kind of, that usually is brainstorming of what you are in the middle of, reflecting on it, and then summarizing themes that seem to be coming out, and then use that to help brainstorm where to proceed and what to prioritize next. So we had kept listening to our C3443, our composition. We had shared the flying score animation with our open mic. We got a couple questions like, what is behind the scenes? And based on that, we spent some time today doing a behind the scenes essay as kind of a script about what we do. And one of the key messages is we have to use music theory to choose new directions. Otherwise, everything we write is just trying to recreate memories of past music. At the same time, once we have new directions, we have to use our gut feeling to choose within those directions. Otherwise, everything is just an empty exercise in numeric enumeration. So that was a wonderful thing to have happen from feedback. Uh, I got another question is, about what is that thing you do at the start? <laughs> And we said, you mean the napkin diagram? They said, yeah, I usually just jump right in. This is a songwriter sharing that. And again, for us, just jumping right in, that works. That's the gut feeling thing. And then periodically, we have to kind of, like we said, go back and do that re-enter, reflect, and project. So speaking of all that, um, We got some ideas from our other projects, our hybrid tech projects. Can we repackage our musical elements uh, and move them from one composition to another? Um, is behind the scenes a kind of a script? Yes, it is. And then we really started thinking about, we were going to go in there. And if you recall, these are the words we had added. Insistent was the first part of the composition, pensive, confiding, listening, transforming, and progressing. And we were kind of, eh, I don't like that word, insistent. Maybe it should be distressed, and this should be asking for help. And I was like, we're just getting all confused. Like we were enumerating words without any gut feeling. So that kind of diverted us into the whole discussion of can sounds evoke feeling? Yes, obviously. Can spoken words evoke feeling? Sure, singing or just reciting poetry. Can reading words alone evoke feeling? Yes, although it seems to be perhaps based on meaning and memory. And then what we really got to this was reading the words affects how we hear the sounds. And hearing the sounds affects how we read the words. And so we ended up making this whole new demonstration piece that we call Composing in Full Media Expression Beyond Words, where we just play the piano, the cello, and the tuba, the same note in sequence with and without words going with them. So we did all that, we did all that, we did all that. So what we want to do, it's a demonstration movie, um, which you just saw part of over here with lots of nice overlays. What we're going to do, though, is our traditional thing, and we'll start and play the score for you. And it does have the words there, never you fear, labeled there on the line. So when we get to that, we will be there. And let's just give you the same experience that we give in the video. We'll go to the nice continuous view and, you know, give it the whole thing. So here we go.
So, as you can see, reading the score, it was cued with ominous, promising, and cheerful. And what is really fascinating here is if you use big colored words overlaying it, that's what we want to test when we put this out. But here, the transition between the third and the fourth line, we deliberately change the word that goes with the sound, the same sound. So. So it's funny, but the, the, the ominous to us, we're not sure that that sounds cheerful. Sounds kind of like an oscilloscope. It's neutral. It kind of sounds neutral to us. The minute we see the word ominous, we suddenly think, oh, that's a warning signal. Uh oh, look out, you know. So, I don't know. What do you guys see? What do you feel? In any event, we will post that uh, in the full rendered version. And that concludes today's stream. Our ideas for next time are, as we said, to share the video demonstration. And then we were just testing how reading words affects how we hear the sound, how would we test, do we read words differently if we play different sounds that go with them? For example, a neutral text with ominous versus cheerful music in the background. And we're guessing that that, that would happen also. We can still return to the composition 3443R and maybe pick some better words in there. And the whole idea of repackaging what we've done um, perhaps with all three compositions. This one is our 3443R, and before that we had the 2552, and before that we had the D-flat 1441. So thank you for your time and attention. Thank you for your curiosity and interest. We appreciate you as an audience. Look forward to seeing you next time. Do come back, and as always, keep on streaming.